Nathan, we're really sorry that you're not able to join us in today's concert in person, but great to have an opportunity to, to chat with you uh, about these wonderful pieces of music. Um, and of course, we were delighted that uh, we were able to tie your residency with us, with the choir being a choir in residence at the Prestine Festival in this last summer. And so we were able to commission um, this, this new piece. Um, so in that context, can, can you tell me perhaps what drew you to the, the writings of George Herbert? Mm, yeah, George Herbert has been a poet that I have returned to for years since I was a teenager, um, known as a sort of Welsh Shakespeare or around the time of Shakespeare and John Milton. Uh, George Herbert was always sort of thrown out uh, of classes um, to, for us to read as sort of being a Welsh bard in many ways. And the thing about George Herbert that I'm really attracted to is that it's so vivid. I mean, this is 16th century stuff that is so dense and so vivid and speaks to many centuries of, 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 of literature. And I came back to it in about 2017, 2018, two close friends of mine, uh, now Kathy and Andy Martin, um, old time singer friends of mine, they were getting married and they said we'd love a sort of pre-wedding concert, <laughs> which I thought was really lovely because all of, all of their friends were musicians. And I came back to George Herbert's love. Um, actually, George Herbert had several love uh, entitled poems, but I chose the third one, which is also known as Love Bad Me Welcome, um, which many composers have set, famously Judith Weir. And I wrote a sort of three-part SSA setting of that for that wedding. So when we thought about this commission with Prestian Festival and Tikerv, I thought, let's go back to George Herbert and do something with that and find other poems that might reflect either something of the time or something uh, of power or, or contrary stuff um, to that original Love Bad Me Welcome. Yes. And, and I mean, how, how do you personally sort of resonate with those texts? I mean, they, they take quite a bit of unpicking, don't they? Um, especially the first two. I mean, Love, Love Bad Me Welcome, but also the Full of Sweet Days, which you chose as, as the, the, the first new text to set in the first movement of this work. Yeah, I, the, the first one, I, I sort of changed the title and called Full of Sweet Days, which is the sort of name of this short choral suite. Um, it's actually called Virtue by George Hu, but again, actually, that's been set by Judith Weir. I think, actually, there's a theme here. I think I've performed those Judith Weir pieces in the past, and they've sort of stuck with me. Um, and that, that, that poem... It's, it's it's a bizarre poem, um, but one that I think is is really beautiful, full of really rich text and this vivid lyricism that I was so attracted to when I was a young teenager. And there's lots of sort of alternative meanings in that poem about new days and about spring, but also about reminiscing on the things that we've lost, um, even though we're in this space of, of newness. Um, and I thought that was quite apt in the time that we've been through and that we're still sort of going through as well. And there was a line in there that um, I think I've got it on my notes here. Only a sweet and virtuous soul like seasoned timber never gives, but thou the whole world turned to coal then chiefly lives. I mean, I'm from the South Wales Valleys and this concept of our relationship with landscape and us turning to things like coal in our history sort of, I was, oh, it really struck me that a 16th century poet uh, from Montgomeryshire is talking about something that is effect, that affected us a long time after and is affecting us now. Um, so there's so many themes within that first poem, Virtue, that, yeah, that really struck a chord. Which, which seems quite dark, but actually it's a sort of darkness to light uh, within that poem, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's something I do quite a lot in my, my own music is, is play on those two ideas, sort of good versus bad, light versus dark. So I think that's what attracted me to it as well, yeah. And the last section of the, of the music that sort of starts to come to life and, and rises up, doesn't it, for the, then chiefly lives, it's, just, it's like this sort of resurrection uh, almost at the, at the end. 
Mm, yeah, hundred percent. And and a lot of the themes that are explored in that poem, I was looking back to motets and part songs, thinking of Stanford and a lot of the stuff that I have sung um, with choirs in the past. And I wanted to sort of wrap that vibe, that mood into this piece as well as sort of my own motet. So I haven't really written a strict motet like that before. But thinking about those those themes and trying to wrap them into a double choir piece was, was quite important for that, yeah. And um, I mean, the, the, the three movements, the, the middle one being the, the one previously written, and then I encourage you to write another one. And so you set upon the, the text, let all the world in every corner sing, which of course is a, a very familiar text, but it's wonderful to hear a completely fresh take on that and I think what's interesting is is the the sort of choral textures of these three um pieces uh, they're all very different aren't they yeah I mean I I was I was thrilled actually of 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 thinking about let all the world in every corner sing uh because at some point I don't think I knew it was by George Herbert um so when I discovered it was I thought wow this is perfect um and has that sort of as you said that energy to finish off this short choral suite and, and thinking of you know the Vaughan Williams which you all know so well and it's such an amazing amazing setting of that poem uh, I was a bit intimidated but one thing I wanted to do with these three works was to explore different sounds within the choir different voicings within the choir so that the first one does have a double choir setup so that we're, f- we're exploring really rich har- harmonies and sonorities within the choir and what is capable there. And then the second one, just for four voices for SATB, something that's far more earnest, something that's far more intimate. And then this one that has little bits of lines that come out, there are moments where the tenors and basses can really show off, there are moments where the sopranos and altos can show off as a sort of choral calling card um, so that a choir could pick up and just show off. That was the whole idea between those, between the lineup, I think, for, the, for those pieces, yeah. And, and, and sort of cleverly using the sort of ostinato figures, I mean, almost a sort of minimalist approach in some areas of it, but um, that, that quite cleverly actually... I mean, it makes a piece sound more complicated than it, perhaps it is sometimes because once once you learn these little motifs, they start to sort of fit together um, quite well. But it's a, it's a wonderful way of delivering energy, isn't it? Oh, I'm glad that you think that because I, when I wanted to write an energetic piece, I don't often actually write energetic pieces. People always say that my music's quite slow and beautiful uh, or pretty. Um, Although some of the most fun stuff that I like writing is far more energetic and has a real impetus to it, and perhaps that is more minimalist, like you suggest. And with Let All the Worlds, it was a way of me trying out those fast-paced, energetic ideas with choir, knowing that actually some of that music can be the most scary for choirs to pull together firsthand, having something that's really rhythmically complex but stepping back and going, how can I create something that has a lot of verve and vigour without it being overtly difficult for them to get their mouths around? Um, so I'm glad that it's worked out that way. Thanks. No, well, well, absolutely. I think what we've got here is a, is a tremendous, um, you know, short suite of, of movements for the, for the choir. And it's quite interesting because we're um, programming this with, with works of Shakespeare uh, in the concert today and things like uh, the Vaughan Williams three Shakespeare songs um, and, and the Cecily McDowell three Shakespeare songs again it's the same sort of pacing of of writing and that three movement form that works fantastically well so thank you so much for for giving us you know a, a wonderful um, collection of new choral pieces here which we really hope other choirs will enjoy taking on next as well great thank you so much Rupert